Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The government of St. Lucia to address deficiencies in the society that affect the disabled. A number of students prepare to take up study in Cuba. Travel agents from key source markets recently converged on St. Lucia for the inaugural Global Peter Awards. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. St. Lucia is among four countries chosen by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, to pilot a project central to inclusivity in the society and economy. To address the dearth of data in the region on disability, the Board of Directors of the CDB is supporting disability assessments in St. Lucia, Grenada, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. The CDB will assist the government of St. Lucia in breaking barriers that include inaccessible infrastructure, inaccessible communication, stereotypes, legislative and policy commitments. The disability assessment project was launched Thursday. More from Janelle Norvell. Deputy Chief Economist in the Ministry of Economic Development, Kerry Joseph, described the initiative as a timely one as St. Lucia is preparing for Census 2020 and the multi-indicator cluster survey to be undertaken over the next few months. Joseph noted that persons with disabilities over the years have been disadvantaged. However, in an effort to enable their full participation in the society and economy, national and regional stakeholders need reliable data to inform and strengthen their programming to adequately address the needs of persons with disabilities. The Caribbean Development Bank, as a development partner, gave its commitment to addressing the disability data deficits in the region by offering technical assistance to allow for the collection and collation of reliable data on persons with disabilities in the region. The bank approved a grant to the government of St. Lucia and three other borrowing member countries, Grenada, Jamaica, and the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, to support disability assessments in their country. The objective of the disability assessment is to enhance the capacity of these countries to develop more targeted, evidence-based projects and programs, knowledge projects and services to support the greater inclusiveness of persons with disabilities in planning and development. In 2011, St. Lucia took its first major step towards creating an equitable space for persons with disabilities by signing on to the United Nations Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. The treaty, according to Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Lenita Joseph, was created with the intention of promoting, protecting and ensuring the rights and dignity of persons with disabilities. As a participating borrowing member state, and the pilot country for this project, St. Lucia is well poised to set the standard and benchmark future initiatives for societal inclusion of persons with disabilities. The provision of this technical assistance from the Caribbean Development Bank is timely, as Cabinet recently approved the appointment of a Human Rights Committee. This committee, through the Department of External Affairs, has the mandate to ensure that as a country, we remain on track with our commitments to international organizations and that we implement and facilitate the provision of the requisite services in accordance with the conventions and treaties that we are signatory to. Social analyst in the Social Sector Division of the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Anicia gil Giddis, explained that through several assessments, a number of challenges have been brought to the fore, including the lack of data. We recognize that disability in and of itself is a heterogeneous experience which differs by type of disability, severity of, dis severity of disability, among other consideration. But importantly, disability intersects with other vulnerabilities associated with gender, gender inequality, and differences attributable uh, to men and uh, boys and girls and women, indigenous identity, uh, religion, age of the disability, onset of the disability, whether it's congenital and from birth, or it is acquired later on in life, and of course, other socioeconomic characteristics. The Disability Assessment Project was launched on Thursday, 20th June, 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. A number of St. Lucian students have been presented with scholarships by the government of Cuba to pursue degrees in a number of fields, including medicine and engineering. 
Over the past 40 years, the government of Cuba has afforded St. Lucians the opportunity of tertiary education. The long-standing bilateral relations between Cuba and St. Lucia has seen more than 600 specialists and professionals graduate from universities in Cuba. Recently, another cohort of students got the opportunity to follow their dreams in a country which has been known to produce top-quality medical specialists. Cuba's ambassador to St. Lucia, His Excellency Alejandro Samincas Marin, reiterated his government's commitment to St. Lucia. We will always, from our humble capabilities, we will do everything that will be in our hands to contribute to the development of St. Lucia and the formation of his human resources, the formation of his professional, we think is a, a very important contribution. But it's in your hands now to accomplish, to finish this moment that we start right now. The Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, who also studied in Cuba, says it is an opportunity of a lifetime. Medicine is a profession that is dignified. It is a profession that requires humility and humbleness, honesty, integrity. And this is what I believe the Cuban culture can inculcate in you as St. Lucian, so that you are coming back to St. Lucia when you finish. And you will finish, because you must have faith that you will finish. You are going out there to do something. And that is what you must focus on. To do this something, and come back, bringing back with you a culture that you are going to incorporate, assimilate into your St. Lucian culture to make you a great person. The chief planning officer in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Claudia Louis, is proud that another group of St. Lucians are able to study in Cuba. She says it is beyond the dreams and aspirations of the students themselves, but it also represents the dreams of a developing nation. We need citizens who are qualified, yes, academic qualifications, but we need, also need people who are critical thinkers. We need innovators. We need entrepreneurs. So while you're there, you have to take the opportunity to broaden your mind and broaden the way that you think. You embrace. It's a global culture. You will be going to Cuba, but you'll not only be exposed to Cuban culture. You will be exposed also to cultures from all the other students who will be there present. So you will meet people from the African continent, from the South, Africa, South American continent. You will meet other Caribbean people. Since 1961, more than 70,000 students from 159 countries have graduated from Cuba. The government of St. Lucia is taking advantage of opportunities to tackle problems associated with plastic pollution and its negative impacts on human health and the environment. In January of 2019, the government announced its intention to phase out the use of styrofoam and selected single-use plastic food service containers in the local food service industry. St. Lucia's journey to reducing single-use plastic commences on August 1, 2019, with a ban on the importation of these items, a ban on the use, manufacturing, sale and distribution of items, will commence from June 1, from August 1, 2020. During the month of July, the Department of Sustainable Development invites other public and private sector departments, agencies and groups to join in minimizing the dependency on single-use plastics, including styrofoam. Dubbed Plastic Free July, this is an international campaign designed to increase awareness of the amount of plastic in our lives by encouraging people to significantly reduce the use of single-use plastics for one month. And this is DNTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called 
called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change, and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms, and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome, everyone. This is your weekend update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The annual School Sports Awards came off Friday at the St. Mary's College Auditorium. Cricketer Zayda James of Archipo Secondary won the prestigious title of Female Student Sports Personality of the Year, while the award for Outstanding Male Student Sports Personality went to another cricketer, Akim Ogis of St. Mary's College. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, delivered the feature address at the ceremony. We are working with the various associations for a much improved format for school sports. The first part of the new frost was implemented this academic year. We saw the introduction of the Big Eight in football. After much analysis and evaluation, it was determined that we shall continue with this format and expand it to the other sports, namely netball, basketball, and probably tennis. Minister Estefan congratulated all for the achievements during the year. Runners from member countries have already started arriving here for Sunday's CARICOM 10K. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports helped prepare the logistics for Sunday's run. Patrick Matre is the Director of Sports and has been coordinating preparations here for Sunday's event. It's coming together nicely. Um, today, um, as you would know, that the, the race is on Sunday morning. Um, and today we, are, we have seen the arrival of the past participants. Um, Dr. Bristol, who is one of the main organizers from CARICOM, is already on island. Um, this morning we saw the contingent from Barbados. Later on we're going to see the contingent from Anguilla coming in. And tomorrow the majority of the runners will be in. Um, so far we have been blessed with good weather and we're hoping for the same on Sunday um, as we prepare. Um, in terms of, of, of preparation, I think we have marked out the route. Um, we are putting things in place and I expect an incident free race and I, I, I am hoping that all goes well um, on Sunday. Mr. Matre also spoke about the actual distances and start points for Sunday's run. We're going to start from, from 7.30 in the, in, the afternoon, in the morning. Sorry, um, We have also thinking seriously of maybe changing start time based on the weather conditions. So we're looking at that closely. Um, we start off by, um, in the Rodney Bay area. Um, opposite um, the, the marina, which is um, very close to Marina Haven, um, along the, the Grosley Highway. We run down the highway um, right into um, the John Compton Highway and we finish off the Sab Plain Field. Um, it's basically 10K. The 5K run starts at the junction of the of Marisil, the Marisil Corinth Junction, just about there's a 5K. And of course, the 1K starts at the top of the of the of um, Vic Boutte and in the roundabout area. And we expect that all of the races will kick off at the same time and hope. Hopefully we'll have a, a prompt start. Based on the field that we've seen so far, it would seem that maybe the last runner for the 10K might cross the finish line in about 45 to 50 minutes. And if that focus on the 2019 CARICOM 10K, we wrap up our segment from Youth Development and Sports for this week. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Travel agents from key source markets recently converged on St. Lucia for the inaugural Global Peter Awards. The event welcomed the top-selling travel agents who contributed to St. Lucia's record-breaking year for tourism in 2018. We're working all over to enhance our product, training our employees, training uh, people. We've just uh, broke ground on a new market to improve the facade of the downtown area in Castries as part of a whole new makeover of the, the city center and the ports. And 
you know, we're just doing a whole lot to remodel and, you know, to change what we do here in St. Lucia. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueum. Frankie, you know I'm traveling to Antigua this afternoon and I forgot my passport at home? Boy, it's a good thing I have my driver's license. I'll still be able to travel. Oh, how can you travel to Antigua without your passport? Under the OECS Freedom of Movement regime, OECS citizens can travel to any of the seven protocol member states without a passport. Once they have an official and valid identification card with their picture and nationality on it. Really? Since when? Since the establishment of the Eastern Caribbean OECS Economic Union, under the revised Treaty of Basté, it entered into force in 2011. So, you mean to tell me that I can leave St. Lucia and go to another OECS country with just my driver's license or national ID and customs and immigration won't stop me? Yes, you can even use your voter's registration card or social security card. As a matter of fact, as a citizen of an OECS Protocol member state, you are entitled to indefinite stay when you travel to another OECS Protocol member state, so you can live and work without a work permit or skilled national certificate. As a construction worker here, I could take my trade to Grenada or any other OECS country? Yes, Frankie. You're straight. And what about my wife and children's schooling? Frankie, OECS citizens and their children will be granted equal rights and privileges under the freedom of movement. That includes access to social services, labor market schemes, health and education for your children and your wife. This free movement thing sounds nice. Hassle-free travel to any OECS country, live and work for as long as you like. The OECS Economic Union is the real deal. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueum. Monsieur Tarnisha, Monsieur Madame Departement qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette le CGIS à ce petit télévision national pays à NTN, Capacito Nouvelle Arqueum. Présente Primus Hutchinson. Les pêcheurs j'ai trouvé pour mettre qui la caïni en meilleure façon pour aider au pêcher plus effectivement pour ces années qui vont venir. C'est le ministre de l'Agriculture, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, qui fait une déclaration sur cela en observance fait les pêcheurs qui ont tombé ensemble les 30 juin. Selon le ministre Joseph, le changement climat a affecté la production de la pêche autant. Et pour ça, le gouvernement a fait un plan pour poursuivre les pêcheurs de technologie nouvelle et a fait pêche pour abattre. Uh, condition of sala. Et dit aussi, le gouvernement a considéré sérieusement pour encourager plus de jeunesse pour embrasser la profession de la pêche. Le gouvernement nous a dit important pour nous savoir ici pour, pour at least pour encourager plus de plus jeunes monde pour entrer dans les affaires pêcher. Et puis, nous savons que le département, le um, fisheries department, là, mais ça, ce programme, nous avons mis ensemble. Nous avons ici, 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 Ministre Agricola a servi l'occasion pour souhaiter ces péchés à bonne fête, mais aussi créer à Souyo pour réfléchir à ce que ça a déjà accompli et pour chercher le meilleur pays gouvernement et le département de la pêche pour aider à faire plus progrès à l'industrie de pêche pour ces années qui vont venir. Parce que ça fait péché, le caïdo a. C'est pas bah qui à l'aise et puis moi voulais emphasize that um, c'est pêcheur ni pour pour en pour serious codes comme consideration ça fait quoi que safety because nous quand on a chaque fois pour that c'est pêcheur qui aide ou il pas qu'à servir c'est gaz safety gaz là nous qu'à encourager ou pour servir et puis là ça fait et puis il y a de danger il est plus difficile pour nous savoir qu'à les pour nous nous besoin pour ça Sauver la vie. Donc, so, quand nous avons célébré la semaine, ça, um, les fêtes, les péchés, nous voulons encourager et éduquer encore ces péchés. Il est important pour nous faire ça en serious consideration et puis pour les sortir et puis pour nous faire péché pour nous faire une safety guerre. Honorable Joseph, tu as adressé les péchés en observance fait péché qui tombent 
Skype to be something really touch. Ministry of Responsibility for Affairs Touristic, Honorable Dominic Fede, tweeted the plus gros agents qui was responsable pour voyage, Rod Langmerick, Canada, Langleterre, Ireland, ça a été fait dans un petit déjeuner, samedi le 20 déjeuner, a été fait comme part des activités pour commémorer quand l'on est depuis tant au loin la terre. Ministre Fédé prend en considération la qualité grand et fort que ces agences là a fait, qui ont des pour changer la manière de monde qui a voyagé, qui a gardé cette récit. Toi, tu agence pour recevoir des informations à ce projet qui a adressé le développement et l'investissement en cette ci en parmi aussi le développement et le port international Hewanora, propriété international Cabot, ça c'est un mapipi établissement pour jouer golf en bout de façade nord cette ci Petit déjeuner qui est ministre de organisé en tout un bout et puis bureau pour l'association des affaires touristiques en Angleterre qui fait une contribution en haut de 22 000 dollars pour l'association des affaires dans cette ci Directeur exécutif pour l'association Les Avec, Anthony Avril, grand remercier Bioa pour grand cadeau assistance financière. Là. Ces agences-là aussi fait contribution des articles l'école. Euh, C'est l'école pays. Il y a aussi ces articles-là prochainement. Commencé en mois de septembre, l'organisation CTP Caribla, OECS, a eu une branche université West Indies à pays à TIG et à Babioda. Il a trouvé le quatrième membre OECS pour établir une branche université. Le vice-chancellor a fait un grand grec exécutif pour l'université, professeur Hilary Beckles, a fait un annoncement de la conférence des membres média à ce campus Mona en Jamaïque. Professeur Beckles, vous remarquez que c'est un long air pour annoncer que le Conseil de l'Université a approuvé formellement l'établissement d'un campus en Tigre et Babiode comme membre de CTP et Caribla OECS. Le campus a commencé l'opération en mois de septembre pour 800 étudiants. Beckles a annoncé aussi que la majorité de ces étudiants ont enregistré pour suivre des études qui ont déjà commencé en collège en Tigre avec l'autre institution d'éducation à Bayon Agrément et puis l'Université Sala. Et comme c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour garder. Je vous remercie pour une invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour une nouvelle accueil. Après ça, je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez la vie. Merci, Pearl Primus. Et ici, nous avons vu ce qui se passe à nous. Les cieux seront en partie cloudy à cloudy et brisé avec quelques scattered showers et une chance de thunderstorms, mainly over the windward islands and areas further south. A tropical wave will bring some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean region today and tomorrow. Heavier showers are expected around the southern islands. Another tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is moving rapidly westward at about 29 miles per hour or 46 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbor high at 1.02 p.m., low at 5.48 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay low at 8.03 a.m., high at 7.15 p.m. Sea is locally rough with waves 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise a Saturday at 5.38 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.